Due to the graphic nature of this program, listener discretion is advised. Not a good time to lose one's head. Oh, indeed. That's not the way to get ahead in life. No. It's a shame he wasn't more headstrong. Mm. He'll never be the head of a major corporation. Okay, that'll do. Okay. So, we've all heard about band members killing each other, band members exploiting suicides, band members ordering hits on their spouses, band members being charged with blasphemy, and, in one memorable instance, an entire band being arrested for grave robbing. All of that pales in comparison, however, when compared to a particular series of events that reads like the most grotesque fever dream, combining the worst of both Varg and Euronymous times by about a hundred. Yeah, that's right. Varg and Euronymous times by a hundred. Are you sitting comfortably? Good. Then let's begin. I'd like to introduce you to Bianca Brust, affectionately known as Bibi. Born in the German town of Lear, Bibi was a dear daughter, a dear grandchild, a dear friend, and a dear sister. She was the son in the lives of all those who knew and loved her. Bianca worked as a medical assistant at Lear Hospital and was described by one co-worker as a nice girl, quite sensible. But, he added, she always had such strange friends. Friends like Matthias Schurman. While the term may be relatively new, incel subculture has been around for, well, probably for as long as humanity has, really. I don't have to stretch my imagination too far to picture a few small family groups of Australopithecus afarensis hanging out, having a bit of a gathering, catching up, and suddenly one says, hey, I haven't seen Elliot for a while. What happened? Was he eaten? And one of the others is like, nah, he's just been holed up in his cave bitching about how no one will date him. I thought Alana was carrying a torch for him. What's a torch? You know, a branch that's on fire. What's fire? What? It's fire, you know, it's... You, ugh, never mind. Yeah, I told him Alana was interested, but he just glared at me and said he wasn't going to lower himself to date some disgusting Becky. But he can't date Becky. She died last summer. Yeah, I had no idea what he was on about. Kept mentioning some chick named Stacy. Stacy? Who's she? Bugger if I know, I stopped paying attention. <sighs> Dude really needs to get out of his mom's cave. But I digress. A quick check of the Wikipedia entry for incel shows that the term was first coined in 1993, which means that Matthias Schorman is a textbook example of early homo incelian. I mean, just look at this guy. Poor grooming, obligatory neckbeard, desperate attempt to portray himself as an edgelord by posing with seemingly intimidating weapons, but which are about as sharp as a corduroy suit, facial expression, which he thinks makes him look tough, but really looks more like he needs more fiber in his diet, and of course, the completely unnecessary and overpriced pair of sunglasses being worn at night. Ray-Bans, for the record. I know they're Ray-Bans because, well, you'll find out. And to fully cement his place in edgelord history, Matthias joined black metal band Carpe Noctum in 1997. No, not that one. No, that's the Polish Carpe Noctum. They're from Iceland! Yes, thank you, sweet Dio. Give me patience. Cannot find the staff today, I swear to God. These kids today with their texting and murder. Where, where was I? Oh, right. When he wasn't playing on his computer, expanding his collection of bladed weapons, or failing to find work as an industrial mechanic, Matthias was prancing around on stage playing guitar under the name Carathorn. The band released their first demo, Days of Dark Winter, in 1998, then managed to release their first and only studio album, Nachgedacht, in 2003, before finally disbanding in 2004. Let's listen, shall we? <laughs> And you say they're disbanded. 
What a tragedy. Truly a great loss to German black metal. While many people would consider this a step back, Matthias instead saw the band's failing as an opportunity to focus on his two favorite obsessions, Bianca and looking at gore on the internet. One site in particular held his interest, called Life of Debauchery. This was a forum-based website where people from all around the world could come together and share images, videos, and stories of real-life gore, death, murder, and mayhem. Hehe. <laughs> See what I did there? Although Matthias had created a user account on the Life of Debauchery site under the highly inspired name I Hate You, truly a font of original creativity, this man, he never interacted with any of the other users. In fact, he would only ever make one post on the site, but it would be a post that would not be quickly forgotten by those who saw it. Late on the night of February 20th, 2008, Matthias invited Bianca over in order to once again try and convince her to date him. Despite the fact that Bianca already had a boyfriend and had been dating said boyfriend for four years. But what kind of self-respecting incel would let a tiny insignificant detail like that stop him? While we don't know what passed between them, it's a fair bet that Matthias declared his love, was rebuffed, and handled it like the mature 32-year-old man he was by attacking Bianca, easily overpowering her, and strangling her until she finally died. But it gets worse. At 1am on February 21st, a new post titled Dead Whore appeared on the Life of Debauchery forum. Those who clicked on it were met with a sprinkling of smile emojis, no text, and about 20 pictures of Bianca, who, after killing her, Matthias had stripped naked except for a pair of knee-high black boots and decapitated. He posed her headless body in various sexual positions and placed her severed head on a table, taking photos of them, the most infamous of which is a photo of Bianca's head wearing Matthias's Ray-Ban sunglasses. Really resisting the urge to make a who wore it better joke. Yeah, I'm not proud of that. The few users on the forums at the time began to debate in the comments as to whether or not what they were looking at was real. Most believe Bianca's body to be a mannequin, and a bad one at that. They wrote things like, FAKE, and OPE the FAGGIT. You know, the usual high caliber of discourse routinely found online. But some forum members did believe the pictures were real and alerted the site's moderators. The moderators attempted to reach out to the original poster via private message, but received no response, and a short time later, the post was deleted. But it gets worse. Like a petulant child, Matthias soon got bored of playing with his new toy and decided it was time to put the second part of his plan into action. Well, I say plan. Not a great plan. He propped Bianca's body up on the bed, poured gasoline around the apartment, and set the place on fire. Taking only a backpack and two swords with him, Matthias climbed into his red Ford Escort and drove away. Neighbors noticed the fire and called for assistance. Upon arrival at the scene, after the fire had been extinguished, responders noticed the body on the bed. Given how bloodless the body was, with a kind of waxy sheen to it, they at first thought that it was a puppet. This opinion was quickly revised, however, after the physician on scene touched it and realized that it was, in fact, a human corpse. There wasn't much time for them to wrap their brains around the situation, however, as a call came over the radio about a car crash in nearby Brinkham. The physician knew he was no use at the apartment, so he left for the crash site. There, he discovered a red Ford Escort that had been driven straight into the path of a truck. Inside, they found the mangled and lifeless remains of Matthias Schormann. But it gets worse. You may have noticed earlier I said that Bianca's body had been left in the apartment, so you may be wondering, what happened to her head? Well, in the back seat of Matthias's car, investigators found his backpack, and just when you thought it couldn't possibly get any worse, do you remember right back at the beginning of this video when I said that Bianca had worked at Lear Hospital? I think you can see where this is going. When the paramedic at the crash site opened the backpack, removed the head, and saw her face, he realized that he recognized her. They had worked together at the hospital. That poor guy probably needed so much therapy. Hell, he's probably still in therapy. Likely also hasn't had a peaceful night's sleep in 13 years either. He was quoted as saying that never in his 25 years as an emergency doctor had he ever experienced something so catastrophic and horrible. Bianca was buried on February 25th, 2008 in the cemetery in Leerheisfeld. 
Over 350 mourners attended her funeral, crowding the chapel and spilling out the doors into the warm spring sunshine. There was no singing during the funeral service for Bianca. Nobody would have made a sound either. The grief weighed too heavily. Only the organ played softly as they carried out her pine coffin to her final resting place. She was 27 years old when she died. That's where the story should end. The victim identified, her killer pruned from the tree of life and now burning in hell. You're going to burn in a very special level of hell. A level they reserve for child molesters and people who talk at the theater. Just FYI, that level of hell also boasts a perpetual Justin Bieber concert and Matthias has a seat front row center. Or he does if there's any justice in the universe. All's well that ends well, yes? Well, not quite. There is a postscript to this story. You see, although the original post of the photos was deleted, this is the internet, and nothing truly dies here. A few of the people who had been active on the site and seen Matthias's post had made screen grabs of the photos, and in June 2009, they reappeared on a different site called ogrish.com. Or ogrish.com, or... I, it's on your screen. That place. The moderator for Life of Debauchery, one wolf bitch, now that's a name I can get behind, was also a member of Ogrish, and when the photos surfaced on that site, she made a post explaining what had happened. On or around February 28, 2008, I was contacted by the Criminal Hauptkommissar of Lier, Germany. The person who contacted me was the lead investigator of the crime. I replied that although I would be happy to cooperate, I had no way of knowing that he was indeed a police officer and would need some way to verify his identity. He stated he would fax me a certificate of proof. Yes, it was real, and yes, I almost wet my pants. I gave the police what I could, which was very little. Since there was a police investigation underway, I moved the other members' reposting of the pictures to an admin-only area. I notified the Lear police as to what action I had taken. They were grateful and surprised, since they figured LOD, being a gore site, would just publish the pictures over and over and over just to piss them off. And there was an additional reason they were grateful. They had shown the pictures to the woman's family to get an ID on her, and the family became... distraught. Hell, who wouldn't? Despite these commendable actions by Wolfbitch, the photos found their way back online, and they are now easily found with a very basic Google search. Which, don't do that. Just don't. Trust me, you, 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 you don't need to see that. There is not enough eye bleach in the world. Lately, it seems like every internet user and their dog is fascinated with the deep web, or the dark net, or whatever the hell they're called. Jared Leto famously claimed to have ventured into these murky depths to find videos and photos of murders and victims while preparing for his... Uh, let's go with interpretation of the Joker. But the sad truth is, you don't need to search either darkly or deeply. There's plenty of sick, disturbing, disrespectful, and grotesque content out there on the surface web alone. Anders Olin, the older brother of Pella Dead Olin, formerly of Mayhem, was once interviewed about his brother and was asked, how could we best honor his memory? Anders replied that everybody who appreciates Pella can honor him by not showing the post-mortem pictures publicly and also help his family to get others to stop displaying them as well. While researching this video, I came across far, far, far more sites containing photos of Bianca as she was in death rather than as she had been in life. I know that it is naive and foolish of me to believe these images will ever be fully removed from the internet, but we can honor Bianca by not showing these photos publicly and request others to stop displaying them as well. Let us remember this beautiful, caring, and loved woman as she was in life and not how she was mutilated in death. Hope you're not feeling too queasy after hearing all of that, but hey, not only did you get learned a thing, but it came with a free dose of nightmare fuel! What can I say except you're welcome? If you're not too traumatized, or if you found yourself inappropriately entertained at some point during this video, do please like and subscribe, share this video with your friends. Why should you be the only one who can't sleep tonight? I'm aiming for five likes on this video, so be a pal, help me out, and if you do, I promise not to leave any severed heads in your bed, or on your countertop, or in your fridge. I make no promises regarding your deep freeze, however. I'd also appreciate any comments, positive or negative, 
Or hell, just leave your favorite head-related puns below. It all helps to feed that insatiable devourer of souls, our lord and master of madness, the dreaded algorithm of YouTube. Additionally, if there's a topic you'd like to know more about but can't be asked to do the research yourself and would rather have it spoon-fed to you in an easily bite-sized, slightly sarcastic and blackly comedic way, let me know. I've got nothing better to do. So until next time, stay safe, have fun, and whatever you get up to, don't take incriminating photos of it and post it on the internet.